Okay. Uh, this is ACT two uh, three one one three. Uh, topic twelve. This is the last topic. Uh, in this ACT three one one three, this topic is uh, is like an addition. So this is not the most uh, the most important topic in in ACT three one one three. The most important thing that you have to learn in ACT 3113 is from topic 1 to topic 11. Uh, and then uh, our main focus is uh, to teach you how to prepare the financial statement for the uh, for companies. So in topic 10, you have learned how to prepare the income statement and balance sheet and then in topic 11 you have learned about cash flow statement so in this topic you will learn about financial statement analysis financial statement analysis is like this in uh, in topic uh, 11 uh, in topic 10 and 11 you have learned how to prepare the financial statement now in this topic you will learn how to to read or to understand or to analyze the financial statement when you see a financial statement uh, you you can make several conclusion uh, in the financial statement the first thing that you will see is the income statement the income statement shows uh, the performance of the business if the business is making profit, then uh, in general, you can say that the business is performing well. Uh, you can say that in general only. Uh, you, you, you can make a good decision or a better decision if you analyze the income statement. If you do not analyze the income statement, you only can make a general conclusion only. Okay, and then the second thing that you can see in the financial statement is the balance sheet. When you uh, the balance sheet shows about the financial condition of a business. So basically, you uh, if the liability of a business uh, is low uh, compared to the total asset, then you can say that in general the business is in a good condition but that uh, you but you can only make a general uh, conclusion only you only can make a good conclusion after you do financial statement analysis okay let's see uh, there are several methods that you can use to make financial statement analysis Okay, the first thing that you have to know is why people do financial statement analysis. The main reason uh, why people do financial statement analysis is first to identify for problems in a business or in a company and second thing is to predict future of the company. So always remember that. Financial statement analysis is both diagnostic and prognostic. Diag diagnostic means it can be used to to identify to identify problems in a company, and prognostic means it can be used to to predict the future of the company. Remember, there are many users of financial statement. Uh, this you have learned this in in the first uh, topic, I think. There are many users of financial statement. 
a company has to publish financial statement every year. So the main user of the financial statement is the external user, and there are several external users. Uh, the the most uh, frequently mentioned is the investor. So investor. They use the financial statement. They analyze the financial statement because they want to make investment decision. They want to purchase shares or sell their shares or keep their shares. The uh, another user of uh, financial statement is the lender. They want to make decision about lending, uh, whether to give loan or not to give loan. And also creditors, also uh, another external user. They analyze the financial statement to make to make credit decision. Uh, internal users also uh, analyze uh, financial statement. Uh, they analyze the financial statement so that they can make uh, business decision uh, or day-to-day -day running uh, decision. So always remember, different user has different purpose uh, or reason for why they analyze financial statement. So our main focus is on the investor. Okay, there are three uh, methods of financial statement analysis that will be covered in this topic. The first one is called horizontal analysis. So. Horizontal analysis, uh, you have to imagine the horizontal line. So let's see. Okay. This is the way to do horizontal analysis on uh, on a, a balance sheet of a company so you have to have two years data current year data and previous year data and then you have to prepare this table uh, the table uh, shown in the column number three and number sorry column number four and number five see there you have to calculate the increase or decrease uh, for every item in term of dollar and then you have to show the increase or decrease uh, of each item in term of percentage so you have to do that for every item in the balance sheet so uh, this is the way to do it Okay, this is the way to do it. You have to calculate the difference in terms of dollar and then you have to calculate the percentage. The previous data is used as the basis or the base year uh, when you calculate the percentage. So this is the way to to do the horizontal analysis uh, on the income statement of a business or a company. Uh, the same thing. Uh, you have to have two years data, and then you have to uh, to show uh, the column related to the increment or decrement of each item. You have to show in terms of dollar and in terms of percentage. So, uh, you also have to understand how to interpret the data. For example here, if you see this income statement, uh, if you do not do the analysis, you will, you will say that the business is getting better. 
in term of performance because in year 2000x1 the profit is 76,000 and year 2000x2 the profit is 91,000 so if you do not do analysis uh, then you will say that uh, the company is getting better so what will be your decision after you do the analysis let's say you do the horizontal analysis so you calculate the difference and the percentage now you can see that here uh, the increment in the net income or profit is 19% only so when you see that number only you will say that it is good because the profit has increased by 19% but now you check the increment and sorry increment in net sales you see that the net sales is 24.8% increase so now what is your conclusion uh, your conclusion is the company we cannot say that the company is getting better because the increase in sales or net sales is 24.8 percent but the the increase in the net income is only 19 percent so we cannot say the performance of this business is getting better because the increment in profit is less compared to the increment in sales if the company is a good company uh, or if the company is performing well then the increment in profit is at least supposed to be equal to the increment in sales now the increment in profit is less than the increment in sales so you can check why the increment in uh, profit is less than the increment in, in sales you see there uh, even though the net sales increased by 24.8% the increment in cost of goods sold is higher than that and also the increment in uh, selling expenses also higher than the uh, than the increment in sales so this business is having problem with controlling its cost okay that is what how you interpret the 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 result of the analysis Okay, this is the way to calculate the increment and decrement you can see here uh, an example of a question related to the horizontal analysis okay the second method that you have to know in this topic is called vertical analysis so how to remember this vertical analysis so you just have to imagine the vertical line Okay, this is the way to do the vertical analysis to a balance sheet of a company. Okay, remember balance sheet, uh, in a balance sheet, you have to list all the assets, liabilities and equity. So, when you want to do the vertical analysis, you have to, to have uh, two years data. Uh, one year data is also possible. Uh, here, the example uh, has two years data. So, the see the second column here the second column shows the amount related to items in the in the balance sheet so the thing that you have to do uh, when you want to do the uh, vertical analysis is to calculate the percentage to calculate the percentages let, uh, re related to each item so always remember uh, total asset always equal to 100 percent 100 percent and total liabilities plus equi equity is also always equal to 100%. So other items are, uh, are divided by the uh, amount of the total 100%. Okay, let's see how to calculate the percentages. Oh, there is no calculation. But you should know that, for example, uh, to calculate the percentage for the current asset, uh, the calculation is uh, 550,000 for year 2000 X2 current asset 550,000 divided by the 1,139,500 so you will get the 48.3% for long term investment year 2000 X2 95,000 divided by 1,139,500 you will get the 
percent. You have to do that for every item in the uh, balance sheet. So uh, the way to interpret this data is like this. So see in the year 2000, uh, 2000 X2, uh, when you want to uh, to know the financial condition of a business, you always refer to the total as uh, total liabilities compared to the total uh, asset. So in this example, uh, you see there total liabilities in year two thousand X two is twenty seven point two percent. In year two thousand X one, the total the total liability is. Um, 36% so if you do not do the analysis maybe you will say that the company is getting worse because the asset of the company uh, in year 2000x2 is less than the asset in year 2000x1 so maybe you will say that the company is getting worse but when you check uh, when you do the, the this vertical analysis you can see that the total liability of the business uh, in year 2000X2, the, the liability of the business is 27.2% uh, compared to the total asset. In year 2000X1, the li total liability is 36.0%. So we, using these two numbers, you can say that after you do the analysis, you can say that the company is getting better in terms of financial condition because the, the liabilities, uh, the the percentage of liabilities compared to total asset is less in year 2000X2 compared to year 2000X1. Okay, this is the way to calculate the percentage. Okay, uh, this is the way to calculate or to do vertical analysis for uh, income statement. So, Remember, net sales is always 100%. Uh, you have to use that as the base number. So other items, you have to divide with the net sales. Uh, for this, in this example, uh, you can see that if you do not do analysis, you will say that the company is getting better. Uh, because in year 2000X2, the the profit is 91,000. In year 2000X1, the profit is only 76,500. So if you do not do the analysis, you say, oh, this business is getting better because the profit is getting higher. But after you do the analysis, maybe you will make a different, a different conclusion. Because when you check, after you do the analysis, uh, you can see that the profit for year 2000X2 is 6.1% compared to the net sales. But in year 2000X1, the profit is 6.4% compared to the total, uh, total net sales. So now you can see that we cannot say that the, the company is getting better in terms of performance because the percentage of the profit is getting less. Uh, not getting higher that's that is how uh, the financial statement analysis can can help you to make good decision about a business if you do not do the analysis then you uh, you maybe you you do not make a good decision or conclusion okay this is the way to calculate the percentages okay this is the last one uh, the method number three that you have to know is called ratio analysis. Okay. There are hundreds of ratios that you can use to make financial statement analysis. Uh, later in the future, you will learn about uh, financial statement analysis in a, a finance course. So... In that course, you will learn in detail. Uh, there are many ratios and maybe there are many more methods that you can use to analyze financial statement. So in this course, this topic is like an introduction only. 
uh, to introduce you to the methods that can be used to analyze financial statement. So there are many financial ratios. I think you have learned about this. Uh, maybe a bit when you did your diploma. So there are three types of uh, financial ratios that you can use to analyze financial statement. The first one is called profitability ratios. Uh, it allow you to evaluate the performance of a business or a company. And then the second type of ratio uh, is the liquidity, liquidity ratios. Uh, it can be used to to evaluate the the cash flow of a business uh, whether the business has sufficient cash to to pay their liabilities or not and the number three is solvency ratios it measures the ability of a company to continue its operation in the future uh, some companies uh, uh, has a good future some companies uh, after you do solvency solvency ratio uh, analysis you will see that the company maybe cannot survive in the future so that is the thing that you can do with the ratios so in the textbook there are examples of uh, profitability uh, profitability ratios there are many ratios too many you cannot uh, i don't think you can memorize all the ratios there are many more uh, there are example of liquidity ratios and also there are uh, examples of solvency ratios okay so you have seen the three methods that can be used uh, to analyze financial statement so um, every method has strengths and weaknesses every method has strength and weaknesses so remember this if you want to make a good conclusion or you want to make good de decision uh, you have to use many methods you cannot depend on one method if you depend only on one method for example you use ratio analysis only then the method uh, has string and rem remember the method also has weaknesses so you have to use several methods so that uh, your conclusion is is better uh, than only using uh, one method one method so these are limitations of ratio analysis uh, even though uh, even though you have analyzed a financial statement uh, using many methods many good methods you have to aware that things may go wrong you think this company is good suddenly the company collapse or bankrupt that thing can happen okay so you have to aware that uh, so these are the limitations of uh, not only ratio analysis but financial statement analysis okay first uh, the limitation is financial statements that uh, do not contain all information uh, always remember that you let's say you have done all three or more analysis uh, do, you cannot be certain that you make a good conclusion because the financial statement itself is uh, do not contain all the information financial statement only contain quantitative information only uh, financial statement only contain numbers uh, but the future of a business sometimes depends on things that cannot be expressed in terms of numbers for example the future of a company may uh, depend on uh, uh, customer loyalty location of the business these two things cannot be measured or expressed in terms of dollar and cents we cannot measure uh, the good location or the customer loyalty okay so always remember that uh, the second uh, uh, 
uh, limitation is related to what I have explained for the number one. Number three, lack lack of comparability between companies. Uh, so uh, when you do the uh, ratio analysis, uh, you you will compare the ratios between uh, one company and another company. You think that you can uh, you can compare the the companies if the company if the companies are in the same sector or industry for example you want to compare the uh, ratio of cellcom and maxis so you think you, you can compare them because they are both uh, operating in the uh, uh, telecommunication uh, industry but actually you have to wear that uh, you cannot say you can compare them uh, because even though they operate in the same industry when you check carefully in uh, in the annual report, they are very different. They have different uh, uh, different target customer, maybe uh, different shareholders, different ownership. Uh, who 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 is the major shareholder, uh, etc. So you have to wear that. You can compare them, but you always have to wear that there are no two same companies uh, to compare. They are very different, even though they are in the same industry. Uh, number four, not all problems are readily apparent. So it means that it, uh, it is like this. Let's say when uh, you analyze uh, a financial statement of a company. So you have done all the analysis, your analysis are good, and you make a conclusion uh, to purchase the shares of the company. And suddenly, after several weeks, the company collapses. Uh, it can happen because not all problems are readily apparent. Sometimes when, uh, when the company prepared the financial statement, uh, everything is fine with the company. But things happen after the, the company published the uh, the the financial statement so you do the analysis on the financial statement but things can happen after the financial statement analysis uh, the financial statement uh, is published to the public so some problems are not readily apparent in the financial statement financial statement number five financial statement analysis is based on past performance so when you do the financial statement analysis, you only have past year data. Uh, that is maybe not the latest data. Uh, for example, if you do a financial statement analysis now, the only financial statement that you have is uh, last year data. Uh, data for 31st of December 2019. Uh, now it is already in July. so. Seven months or six months has passed. Many things can happen uh, within this uh, six months. Uh, number six is timeliness of the financial information. So, uh, number six is related to the uh, number five. Uh, uh, time has passed since the annual report uh, is published. Okay, so this uh, this topic is like the introduction only. Uh, I don't think I will ask you uh, to do calculation uh, for this topic. But I want you to understand uh, what is the methods that you can use to analyze financial statement. In this topic, you have seen three methods. And then I hope you can see uh methods that can be used hopefully you can also understand a bit uh what 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 are the strength and weaknesses of every method and then uh, also you remember this uh, limitations of the financial statement analysis thank you very much this is the end of the lecture for act 3113 good luck good luck for your final exam